And what's up, Buttercup? How is that quarantine going? Are you keeping yourself busy? And don't forget, you have many projects to finish, so this is the perfect time of doing that. Don't go out if you don't have to, and if you do, wear a mask. And this is Shahar Boyayan again with the Art Meets Business Week. Today is our day, I believe it's day four. I'm not really quite sure anymore, but we're going to keep talking, keep talking, right? Well, we are live. And whatever you're watching, Facebook, on Curious Mondo site, YouTube, there is a chat box or a comment box uh, near the video. Use that to communicate with us, submit questions or comments that you have during this broadcast. We love to have interaction or else it seems like I'm talking to myself all the time. It's quite, quite weird. Okay, so what have we done in the last few days? We started by, the, I lost the paper that said with that, but, oh, I have it here. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to go through what we covered so far and then what we still have. So, uh, in the first day, we talked about the future, what we know and what we can predict that is going to happen in things related to, to the business of selling art, okay? And we talked about a lot of consumer behavior that is supposed either to change or to intensify. Then on day two, we talked about the basics of live streaming and we actually talked a lot more uh, about the business side of it. Actually, yesterday I showed you a simple setup where you can do live streaming and have a good quality. And the arm that I was using to hold my cell phone, I told you is not the one I prefer. I use that one for my tablet. Uh, this is the one that I actually like to use. And the reason behind that is because it's very easy to move and that one is not. So I can move this and I can put, for example, a, a top view camera and then I can easily bend this and, and do in front or, or any other kind of movement. So it's a little easier to manipulate than the other. And like I told you, I think it's under $20 if you buy on, in the stores online. So that's just to close the topic from yesterday. And then today we are going to talk about positioning and I want to talk a little bit about uh, artist statement. And in case uh, we don't get there, I'm going to try to keep this around 30 minutes as it was the original plan. Then I do it tomorrow. So don't worry, we are still going to cover everything. I'm really running on low today. <laughs> we had a incredible, a very, very, very busy uh, day. The whole week has been busy, but it was very busy today. And because we're uh, actually preparing new things for you and we have to test and test softwares, the workload is a lot. So I am tired by now, but we are going to cover. And if I go over time a little bit, it's okay. If I can sense it's going to take more time, we do this tomorrow. I think what I'm bringing today about the positioning uh, really suggests pay attention because it is crucial. Uh, what you may not know, just because maybe you don't deal with uh, a lot of uh, you consulting like I did, is that if you don't get the way you were positioned in the market, you have to work three times harder to make things happen. And nobody likes that, right? So it's better to, you know, it's really stop and think about the positioning before you go and, and start doing things. So when we go after any help, like I need, I, I was doing this, I just saw a post of um, a massage therapist and she was saying, okay, I cannot do massage six feet apart. So I'm looking for another thing. And she was actually making amazing things. Uh, so many of us are in that moment right now and others just want an extra income or others just always wanted to have a business. So they are thinking, why not right now, right? But the thing is that we tend to focus on what I need to do. We, when we were uh, doing consulting, it was interesting. We. At the beginning, we would get any type of business owner. So the one person business owner or bigger companies. Then later, we kind of funnel that to more structured companies. But the funny thing is that they all would come. And because we always lived in the online environment for for a very long time, they would, they would come and say, I need help with social media. Or I need help with my website. Or I need help selling online. Whatever was the thing. And then... The, the normal process for consulting, you start asking questions. And after a little while, 
you really realize that they didn't need that. <laughs> they needed to know who they were and who they were selling to. And if those questions didn't have answers, that's where you need to focus first because or else it doesn't matter what you're using. It's just not, uh, it's not going to get any traction. So very important to understand that. And it also avoids you to, be, to make huge mistakes in the process of growing a business. So that, that's why positioning is very, is very important. And that's one of the things we always specialize in, to get that phase first. And many times then the business sees a, a growth and in some cases they go and, and look for investors and that's when we get out because we are good at this part. Uh, getting the message right, getting the positioning right. And usually when other people come, they, they try to change everything because then it's all about making the money fast to cover whatever was invested. So anyway, uh, why is this important for artists? Because it is a, a business like any other, right? And if you don't, don't get that right, you're still going to be struggle, even, even though your pieces might be awesome, but they just don't get the attention or the sales that you're looking for. We did talk about yesterday about just getting attention and getting attention and buyers. They are two different things and you need to be catering for both because we do need the visibility as well. But we cannot fool ourselves. The visibility will do the trick and you won't have to sell or a process to sell. You will have to have that. So let me see by where I do start today. Uh, I'm going to start with this, the book that we talked about yesterday. So the question was, and she actually made this question two days ago, uh, that if she could sell a book or, he, he had, or if it had to be something online, and of course, no. The online is really the channel where you can get the audience to buy, right? You don't have to do online products in, in order to sell online. You don't. Uh, you can, but you don't have to. And can you sell a book? Yes, uh, actually, you can sell really anything that you can imagine. Uh, and I mean anything. For example, dirt. Dirt tends to sell very, very well. It has been sold in little containers for you to wear as pendants. It has been sold by direct mail. There, there are huge uh, million dollar stories just behind selling dirt. It, it does sell. Uh, we had an example about two years ago with Jody Russell, uh, where she was doing an episode of Art Makers Makery, and she was actually selling three or four different types of dirt that they are used to create glass art, but still dirt. And it was one of the most successful episodes concerning sales. So you can sell dirt at any type. I know a guy, and maybe you heard of him before, that he sold the bricks of a bridge, I believe in Seattle, years and years ago. He made a lot of money doing that, bricks. Uh, stones. And the pet rock. The pet rock, yeah, that's what I was going. And, and you can sell rocks, right? Uh, maybe some of you had a pet rock at some point. I know I had. And I know I used to take a lot of care of my pet rock. And yes, I did try the tricks that came with it that I could use with the rock. So there is nothing that cannot be sold if it's sold to the right audience. And, and it is what it is. So with consulting, for example, sometimes I would gather some ideas that inside my mind I was, oh my gosh, you know, how are we going to do this? And, but I never told anybody you cannot be successful with this because that's just not true. If the, uh, the, the research and the effort is put together and the work is done because there's always work involved, yes, it can be successful. You have sometimes to twist a little bit the message to appeal to a certain group, but you can. So let me tell you of one story that I, I'm sure you know the product, but you, you probably didn't know they worked with us. Right, right at the beginning, remember, we come when they need the positioning, right? Comes a father and a mother. The son was also part of the company, uh, but he was not there on the first day. He came later, but it was interesting. They're a very Utah couple, you know, very sweet uh, older people and they came and they were talking about their product and their product is a product that helps you squat when you go do number two right and you're listening to that and I, I I was not aware of this practice I know it is common in Asia but I was not aware that this had health benefits uh, going with that and you're listening to the whole story and it's a very interesting story right because they are talking about 
poop and you were hearing about poop and, and thinking, how is this going to sell? And, inside, and all I can say in a moment like this, ha ha, hmm, ha ha. Well, <laughs> uh, so you probably heard of Squatty Potty, right? At that moment, they had a few pieces. They were made out of wood. They were kind of prototypes. Uh, we still have one here. Uh, in one of the, bedroom, the bathrooms. Uh, so it's a very interesting product. But the problem was at that point in time that how do you introduce a product to a market that on a first moment doesn't know they have a need for that? You can do that. But that usually comes with a lot of money together because you're going to have to look for uh, a way to put that in the mind of the consumer that they need that. This has been done many times in, in history, but it costs a lot of money. And at that point, that was not the, uh, doable right there. So the route that we went was, okay, so in the Western uh, Hemisphere, uh, who could be interested or who is already practicing that kind of, of habit? Well, uh, we found that, for example, people that do yoga are more familiar with this. And there's a list of why you do this that, that come with health benefits. And we started exploring that to see if there was a way that we could introduce the product and they would jive with people. And they, this group would start almost like starting a new movement. And then that would grow to the mass market. So, but how do you start that from zero and without a lot of money? Uh, we talked about looking for websites that talked about that problem, right? And we found, we found two. Uh, one of them was called the Poop Report. I don't know if it still exists, but it had a very large audience uh, reading about the topic, right? And they, the, the family bought two banners and really they were like 300 bucks. So for advertising, that's nothing. That's really no money to play with advertising. And they bought that and they start selling. The, the interesting thing is that they start, yes, we went the traditional route of advertising, but we were going uh, into a very specific audience, right? And they start selling every day, some, and things start moving. And then one day a, a producer, I think, I, I don't know exactly who was the person, but somebody that works with, with the production of Dr. Oz found them there, contact them, and they had to jump to that platform. And later, of course, the things uh, grew. They went to Shark Tank, and now you find the product everywhere. But you see, this is challenging because on the first moment, if a person comes to you and say, now you know, right? But if it came before and it said, okay, can you uh, sell something to help people poop better? Uh, that is not medicine related. It's quite a challenge, right? So yes, you can. The thing is, you have to find the right audience for that. Lucky for you, with a, a book related to arts and crafts or that incorporates a process or a, several processes in, in between, it's actually easier because we are buyers of this type of product already, right? But there's another thing that is extremely important, and, and I want you to write that down. When you find an audience that has an irrational passion, they will never question how much money they are spending on that. Okay, so for example, if I love uh, model trains, I never stop buying trains and trails and miniatures and, and tiny little trees and, and fake ponds and, and paint for that, right? Never stop doing that. So when we have a rational passion about something, we don't measure how much we spend. It doesn't matter in which industry. If I find people that have a rational passion about something, I know I can sell to them over and over and over again. That's extremely important. Of course, with artists and crafters, we tend to have several irrational passions, right? I see something about needle felting and I need it. I see something about textile art, I need it. I see something about beading, I need it, right? So luckily for the people that try to, to sell to this market, there's really irrational passion involved. Now, you might have heard out there, I heard from a big marketer once, that the craft industry doesn't sell anymore. Because with, as with many things, there was a huge dip at some point, and, and that market shrank a lot, and is still a, a very small compared to 
what it once were, were. so I, I was told, because of course I have been here just for 15 years, but it shrunk and it's still less, but it's still in the billions of dollars. So it's, it's small for whom and doesn't sell, what do you mean by that? Right? I know people here in town that have paper companies with scrapbooking. There's nothing that is, you know, everybody uh, used to, to do scrapbooking or still does, I don't know, but they sell really well. So yes, you can sell, uh, but you have to know who you're talking to and looking into, okay, do I have a crowd that has an irrational passion about this topic? And then comes the thing of, are you going to stop only with the book? So I'll tell you in a second, but I need to read some of the comments I have here. How does the phone stand attached? Clamp, yes, it has something that just does this and you put your, your phone there. Um, we have with us USA, Jamaica, Canada, Australia, Portugal. Thank you so much for being here. Karen G, love the teddy bear. So this one I got from a friend of mine, a local artist. His, na his name is Jim Valentine, and he is an amazing chainsaw carver. He's actually an amazing carver, period. But he creates this out of trees uh, with a chainsaw. Man, he looks macho when he does that. And then you have a teddy bear with a balloon at the end. He's awesome. His name is Jim Valentine, and he's an amazing artist. I'm trying to convince him to come and teach a course for us in the lab, at least for about four years now. And you know, there's always, oh, soon. So we'll see. Uh, Denise is saying, uh, really enjoying the sessions. Thank you very much. Bri, would someone tell me what exactly is positioning your art statement? What does that mean? You will see, hang on, hang on, hold your horses. Nancy, uh, yep, I had a homemade pet rock. See, My, I took mine really seriously. Uh, Jen Rowe, uh, that is the issue with being a trendsetter. You are ahead of the world. Well, th this happens too. Sometimes we think about products and things that we put out there that really the market is not ready. It does happen. Uh, it has happened to me in the past. Maybe you're not going to believe this, but my very, very f uh, venture online was a website. And mind you, I didn't have a, a computer at that point. Uh, was a website that uh, artists would submit uh, short films, so film artists would submit short films, and I would broadcast that for free for people. And I have to tell you, that's not a huge leap to YouTube, but it was years and years before that. We had, a, we had people watching and we had people submitting, that was not the issue. And we could even get sponsors. The problem was the technology at that time was a pain in the neck to watch a video online. It was not the time yet, right? So it didn't succeed. But yes, sometimes we are ahead of the game and what you can do. Oh. Okay, so Cheryl, hi from Canada, love your classes, thank you. Coco, Shahar, rational or irrational passion? Irrational. Do you think it's rational when you enter a, a craft store and you start, I don't know, in the paper section and you went in the yarn section and you have something from all of them. Doesn't that happen? Or you enter the store to buy just one thing and you end up with five or six at least. And you know, the heavens help you if there, is, there are many coupons involved, right? So it's irrational. We just cannot control that. Uh, I have to hold myself, for example, with the number of pets I have. I love animals. I would have every single one of them if I could but I have to hold this irrational passion somehow, right? But others, we can foster that all the time. And with crafts, is that, that's what's happened. Shailene, hey Shailene, uh, now it seems like crafting is exploding again. It, it, there, there was a revival, right? So you had a time when the China products start coming in and coming in, that for people it started making, uh, it didn't make any sense to make anything if they could buy so cheap. And we can. But like I explained on the first day, our perception of what's value, va valuable has changed during the recession. And now for sure it's going to change again because now more than ever, we are, we are having that feeling of being a part of losing things, right? And fear that is controlling. So when we come out of this, we are going to be t seeing life in a different perspective and that will change our behavior again. And of course, things that have meaning they have emotions 
they are more valuable than things that are produced in, in a bunch of stuff. Plus, there is all also the movement of people like me that do care about the environment. So, you know, wearing something for two or three times and throwing it away, not a good thing, right? So we are we're using more the demanding part uh, and, and the recycling part is growing again, which is a very good thing, even if you don't believe in the climate change thing. Uh, Sian, thanks for doing this. Shahar Jenro, Shahar from yesterday. What about the use of testimonials? Okay, I'm going to write down so I don't forget that. Uh, Denise, craft is finally art. Yes, so here's what happened. A few years ago, uh, we had this perception that craft had no value, right? Again, because people were not making and, and everything is very, especially crafts with kids and stuff is very easy to do and patterns. So people said that has no value whatsoever to the point that the stores start taking the word craft out of their names. So if you know the big stores out here today, they at some point, some of them had crafts in their name and they took it out because ooh, ooh, we are, we are not doing that even though they were selling exactly the same thing. Well, guess what? Now this has reversed and there is really a trend saying that, hey, when you look, there's really not much difference between what you call art and what you call crafts, right? There are minor differences that you could consider to be true, like saying, okay, in art, we don't use patterns or things that are reproduced, anybody can reproduce, you create unique. But other than that, not really that. So that is coming back. Right? And again, the desire of people to start making because it causes frustration if you have an idea in your mind and you cannot translate that into whatever it is in the physical world. Right? So if you don't know, and I told you the, the, the story about people reaching out to us because they want to help with the masks, but they don't know how to touch a, a sewing machine. So what can we do in this situation? We acquire that skill. So it's true, it's having a revival. Uh, but for normal Paula, a lot of people are going to stay away from things made in China, at least for now. I hope it's not because of any type of prejudice about the virus, but I think it happens because one, we created this uh, realization that it's important uh, you give more value to things that other people or you yourself make, and and the other reason is. Uh, I had it. It just escaped. Uh, what is the second reason that I think that will happen? Uh, we are spending more time and many of us are creating things and say, see, I can do that. There's another reason I'll come for now, but I hope it's not because of prejudice, uh, because that would be a bad thing. It's oh, because maybe now, because there is shortage of crucial things that are keeping, that are keeping or making people become sick, we have maybe to realize that we need to start producing things here again, because that, that was always healthy in any country, right? So maybe we shouldn't outsource and maybe we shouldn't spend so little in, in some things and start here back. But I don't know, and I don't want to get into politics. But I think that's why this is going to happen. Okay, book, and then I ended with the question, is it only a book? So if you're thinking about just start doing something and selling, so it can be products, it can be books, it can be, it can be courses like we talked yesterday. Uh, it's just to make some money right now, that's fine. But if, you, if you inside your mind you have the idea of, but could I create a sustainable business out of that? Could I, could I leave full, full time out of that or not? What, what should I go? I, I have that desire because you, you gotta have the desire to create a business because as in anything, you're going to do things you don't like. And maybe it's the marketing, maybe something else. I, for example, hate numbers. Accounting is not with me. But when we were very, very small, we had to, and it, it was even more difficult to us because we didn't understand the system. We had to learn and deal with that. So you have to do things you don't like until you can outsource that. Um, but if, you, if you're going in that route, yes, I want to have a sustainable business that I can support myself, maybe, maybe the whole family. You got to think that where you can go with this, 
because you need to have different channels of revenue. Uh, a company that has one product will not survive for very long. They might even survive for a while and even make a lot of money for a while, but that will dwindle. You need to have different channels of revenue. And that doesn't mean that you have to create a similar product over and over and over. So it doesn't mean you're going to put a book out and then next year you're going to put another book out and no, different. So let me tell you an example. Uh, one of my best friends at some point was one of my first clients. And we had this relationship, we, would, we, we told him to, how to build a podcast, like, I don't know, 14 years ago. He gave us an office for us to have our first office, and the relationship went on and on. And one day he, uh, he comes and says, you know, I always, uh, he has a printing shop. And he, he said, well, I, always, I am always teaching authors how to market their books, because they might have the money to print the, the books, on, on self-demand, self -demand, right? On demand, but they don't, have, they don't have the knowledge on how to make it sell. And the average uh, author will sell in the lifetime of the book 250 units where it could be bigger without spending a lot of money. And so he had all this process that he, and, and write down the word process, he had all this process on how to make uh, author sell books. And he wanted to do an ebook because at, the, at that point, everybody would say, you gotta offer something for free on your site. So put an ebook and people will download. That happened right after the newsletters start, start, stopped working and we still see both on websites. But anyway, I said, okay, we can do that. But then what? Then what happens after that? And there was no after that. There, there are things you should be doing, like gathering names and emails and to be able to communicate, but where would that lead? Maybe to some speaking engagements. And, and that was really one of the things he had in his mind. I want to, to be a speaker, so, okay. So then I told him, but you have a process here, right? There is a step one that they need to do. There is a step two, there is step three, and however many there was there. So it's a process. So why don't we, we, we use this process to sell something bigger? Because a book, you're going to sell for how much? 13, uh, even if it was a printed book. The ebook, almost no value. So you would sell for five, 10 bucks tops. A book, a printed book, 13, if it's really nice, with hardcover, maybe 20 something, but that's as far as you go, right? It's rare that you can sell them a lot higher. Uh, so what if we use the system to create a, a kind of a course, but it's all printed. So they have a manual, they have the steps, they have a, a DVD that accompanies. And, and then he had the idea, let's put every, these things in a box and call publishing a box, right? For him, boxes and stuff like that are very easy to come. Uh, so we did that. It was a beautiful product. Right, and with that product, we started uh, going out and going to associations, and he would start speaking about what he wanted and selling those, and it did well for a while. It was pretty exciting, but of course, uh, he would have to keep speaking in order to keep selling. So then there was a, a change in his working environment, and he was in touch with a bigger printing company, and we were talking and say, why don't you offer the process to them? But who is going to buy the process? And then I'm going to, to, to you know, have the, the boxes. And I said, just go and offer the process, right? And he, there was a, a period, it lasted months, and he sold the idea of how market, uh, authors needed the marketing piece in order to sell their books, and the printers were already printing the book. Well, the company at the end decided to not only buy the idea of the process, but hire him for, I, I think, two years where he would go to every printing shop in the country, uh, showing them how to sell that process to, to authors. It became huge if you think it started with an ebook. Okay, so you have to think, what are the revenue channels that I can create for myself that will keep the money coming in all the time? And they can have different formats. So for example, let's take Curious Mondo as an example. I tell my clients, you have to find around five to seven different ways of making money inside one company. Then you can say, I can, I can face difficult challenges. So in our companies, it's still very young, so we don't have seven, but we have, uh, of course, the courses, 
right? You, some of you buy the courses. We have the membership. Is another way to bring money, right? It brings value to both parts. So everybody wins here. But the, the money is exchanged. So we have that. We have the add-ons with the DVDs. That's the third one. Uh, we sell products for, for some of the classes. That, that's a fourth one. I don't know if we have more. But ab about those four, right? So if one dries out, I still have three to rely and bring money to pay the bills, right? But if I only have one and that is not selling, so for example, if I only do the massage, there's nothing uh, around it of any type, what happens? I'm out of money. I have to reinvent myself and that's always harder, right? So even if you may be thinking, I want to sell a book, well, if the, this book involves a process, so step one, step two, step three can be how to sculpt fairies, for example. It involves a, a process, right? Armature, uh, clay, and drying, and whatever, whatever. Um, can, I sh can I package this in different ways or create other venues, okay? Uh, but again, be careful what you hear that other people are making a boatload of money. Like for example, oh yes, I'm going to teach people how to make fairies and I'm going to start a membership site and they are going to pay me $10 a month. If I get 10,000 people, I'm good. Be careful, okay? Most memberships, including very, very big companies out there, they don't surpass 2,000 people when they are successful. All these monthly boxes that you see, that you see coming and going like crazy, you see them going exactly for the same issue. It doesn't matter how much money they put into advertising. Why? Because the, the, the turnover is very, very big for many reasons, right? Uh, one of them, for example, if a crisis happened and I have a monthly bill, it doesn't matter how much the monthly bill is uh, for a membership, that's, that is the first thing I'm going to cut because it's, it's superfluous. I cannot stop paying my light my power, but I can stop paying a membership. So be careful again, think twice and really dig deep, deep before buying the story of someone out telling there that they made millions with that. Because uh, I had several membership programs and I can tell you, the retention, uh, you have to think and rethink and rethink that before you launch, because if they don't stay with you and they don't renew, you're going to be working a lot to get people and it's going to cost you a lot of money. Whew. That was a lot about books. Let's see. <laughs> uh, I love the course detail animal drawing in pen and watercolor with Laura Summers because she explained how she gets income in so many ways of her art. And really think about this. She has, she sells the prints of the, the, the drawings that she has. She has the stickers. She has, she has several lines of products and she teaches, right? So there are several lines of things coming that brings very good example. Uh, whatever, Jenna, process often known as a franchise. McDonald's is a very specific process. Yes, but all you have is, it is the same, but it's not. Because uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you about my process and, and maybe that becomes uh, very clear what it is. In a franchise, you structure that to be duplicated in a very easy way in different points right, and having people taking care of that. Uh, but you can be a coach and have a process, you can be a sculptor and have a process, uh, you can be a painter and have a process that it's, people will duplicate that, but not in the same format as a franchise. I hope it's clear. So for example, we uh, created a, a system for people to be successful in positioning. And we spoke for years in many, many uh, events about this process, including Met trade, which is a very big uh, home care equipment trade show, really, really thousands and thousands of people attended. We spoke there for five or six years, always on the same topic, because it is something that people need. So I'm going to tell you the steps. I'm not going to go into every single one of them. There is one that I want to talk about. Uh, we do have a course on that if you want to go deeper, but you, you are going to get what I'm saying. So for you to position yourself the best way possible in the market and to detach yourself from the others. We told you yesterday, the online world, especially live streaming is going to become so crowded. You, you know, I'm embracing because of the number of the courses that are going to show up. 
So we are going to have a lot of competition. We, like me, with courses, Beverly, with her social media. Why? Because everybody is going to be doing the same thing and is going to be going live at the same time. So it's not going to be easy. You have to find a way to grab attention and, and loyalty. So how do you do that? So the first step is, you, you can write those down, is create a irresistible promise. You gotta be about something. And actually, if you could get our, uh, well, I, I know the tagline, but our mission. So you have to create a resistible promise, something that people really uh, understand what you're talking about. So I'll give you the best example, Disney. What is Disney irresistible promise? It is that it's the happiest place on earth, right? So the happiest place on earth might be different for you and me what happiness is, but the fact is that you, you understand what it is and, you, and you're longing to be happy, right? So you go to the happiest place on earth and they can do all kinds of things around that. So theme parks are, are one, merchandise is another, the film industry, the pay-per-click industry that they have right now, pay-per-view. Uh, they even have a, a company that does wedding gowns and each wedding gown belongs to a princess that you grew up with because you, you watch the, 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 the motion pictures and everything. And so it doesn't matter what revenue channel they are generating, it's all under that umbrella. So you gotta find that for yourself. Now it's hard because uh, you cannot copy Disney, not because of copyrights, it's that uh, you gotta convey inside what you make, okay? So, for example, what, what's Curious Mondo tagline? We start this every single day. You've been hearing this for five years. Welcome to Curious Mondo, where you conquer new possibilities. Okay, so what's the thing? We are the place where you're going to open many, many doors for possibilities for you. It's not about how great we are. Disney doesn't do that either. It's never about you. But remember yesterday I told you who they become by working with you. So in my mind, in my mind, no, in the mind of any of us here at Curious Mondo, anybody that interacts with us will see new possibilities in their lives. It's their choice to follow these possibilities or not. But how do we do this? We show you new skills that you can implement and see new opportunities. And if you really sit down and you think about all the courses you have, Right, Brie? Blink, blink. Yeah, she has a ton, of course. And you think, look at all the venues that I could go if I wanted to go deeper in some of them, right? Uh, if we take the, the view of I, I, I have them because I like to make these things. No, if I were to make uh, money with these things, look at all the possibilities that I have here. So we created our irresistible promise is this. You interact with us, we are going to show you different ways to go. And then it's your choice if you go or not. And we do that by providing you with new skills, new ideas, new trends all the time, right? So you have to do the same in your business. You have to see, okay, who they become by working with me? What, it's about them all the time. It's not about you. If you go with clever logos talking how great you are, nobody is going to pay attention. Another, another example, and I'm not going to, to remember the whole phrase, but was Harley Davidson. Right here in Utah, we see a lot, right? We have beautiful, beautiful outdoors. And you see those guys, and they are usually over 60 now, right? And driving in, in a huge group. And they are always so proud, right? Uh, Harley Davidson was, oh, can I remember that? Do you remember, Nash? Um, a, a big, loud, we create big, loud motorcycles for machos or machos wannabe. That, that want to, to that, well, he had a cool ending as well. So, you know, it's exactly who you see driving. And so you need to understand the promises, of, uh, the irresistible promises, what you promise to them that they will become, okay? That was a very long one step. So let's go to the other. Unveil your core story. Okay, I talked about the story many, many times and storytelling is one of the most important things always but right now as well. So you have to form a core story, why you do this and things like that. Find your unique voice. That for an artist, we are, we are looking for that as 
the way we express ourselves, and, and that's not an easy thing. I know, for example, that because I dab into several mediums, that's a very hard thing for me to, to find. I'm still looking for that. But some of us find that very easily, right? You see a Karen Baker's uh, sculpture, you know it's Karen Baker's, right? Uh, so you, you see a Melissa Terlizzi uh, sculpture and you know it's Melissa's, right? She doesn't need to tell you. She found her voice, she found her way. But we also need to do that when we are communicating with other people. They, they need to know what we are about, right? And, and because uh, when you become a business, you deal with some prejudice, you deal with the fact that some people hate businesses, you need to be very strong on what you are communicating and having a, a reason for doing that. And some people will not like and Okay, move on. Uh, you, need, you need to define, you need to incorporate mystique and rituals. Okay? So this is the point I wanted to, to talk about today because this is so important. And really, I wish it's been like five years the last time I stepped on a stage to talk. So I don't remember all the stories I used to tell about this. But remember we talked the last two days that the brain cannot cope with an unanswered question. So when it has an unanswered question, it sticks. So for example, when this virus things start coming up, I know you were hooked on TV or scrolling the feed of some social network, like looking for something to tell you why this is going, why do I have to do this, why people are suffering. You just cannot get out of that, right? Because it has an unanswered question. Companies can, can use this to their advantage. So for example, uh, what's the secret formula for Coke? You don't know, and they say they guard this very well and ta la la. But the fact is that they use this to make people engage with Coke. The same thing happened with the KFC chicken. It was a recipe that was uh, kept in five different safes in five different or seven different parts of the world. Nobody had access to the whole. How important was it, right? And because of that, they were the success they were for a long time. So, uh, but, but of course, you don't have a product that you're going to, to hide in a safe, the, the process, because that's not how you work with art. But you can incorporate uh, mystique and rituals in the way you do things. So, if you look at two of the most successful industries on earth, they are multi-level companies. And it, it's not relevant if you like them or not. But you think about this. There are many levels that you go through, right? So I, each one has its own, but you can start as bronze and then go to, uh, to diamond and, and gold and whatever, whatever. What is this? What does this mean? Each level, you can achieve a certain amount of information. And then you have to graduate, sell more, to go to the next one. And then you have to sell more and have a bigger team in order to go to the next, next one. And you're always admiring the leaders, right? So whoever is the diamond, blue diamond, however is the, the, the terms that they use, you're, going, you're inside, you're really thinking, I want to be like him. Yeah, I only have one friend that wanted to join me, but I want to be like him. And that desire is what makes you act, right? And, and go and do whatever needs to be done in order to, go, to grow the organi your organization in that company. Uh, they use a lot of that, and they use a lot of mystique as well, right? Uh, how they attract, how the, the parties that some people have access. The other industry that follows the same principle, and it's huge. And I, I know, don't be offended with the, the word industry. I mean industry in organizations that grow a lot. Churches, any church. You also have levels. You have information that you don't access until you do this, this, and that. Uh, there is a lot of mystery all the time. And there are a lot of rituals, depending on the type of church that you, that you go. There are more than others, but there is also uh, a lot involved. So how, but you're thinking, but I'm not a church. I'm not a multi-level. I'm not Coke. I'm not KFC. What are you talking about, Shahar? Maybe you work too hard today. No, think about this. Do you think... Curious Mondo has any mystery and rituals? What do you say? Think about that. I'm going to read the comments where you think. Uh, the, John Witters, we really need more of this. Thank you. Island Girl, I like if I want to sell fairies, but they don't sell, so I have to look at what I can sell. Then tell me 
what I can sell becomes the what you do instead. I'm not sure of, of what if I understood, but fairies do sell, and they're going to sell even more. They're fantasy. Uh, we already had a huge desire for fantasy. This is going to explode. Sometimes it's the way you position the fairies. Okay, I ask you what's the ritual for Curious Mondo, so let me write so I don't forget, because I have to tell you another story. So how do you do this? Sometimes you just put a little twist. So for example, and this happened many years ago, uh, Brazil, where I'm from, is a... Uh, um, a country that is very interesting. We have, most of us are Catholics by, by birth, right? Uh, it's huge, that population, and it's an interesting religion that it also deals with guilt a lot. And we also have a very African influence. Uh, we have something called Macumba, which is, we, we can translate into voodoo, but it's not the same thing. But it's very spiritual. Uh, as, a, as an influence. So we believe in magic and tricks and many people believe in saints and spirits and, and other things. It's just how they, we are a melting pot. Okay, so we all have all these mixed emotions and beliefs. So uh, there are many stores where you can go and buy candles, you can buy some herbs that attract luck, like we all have in front of our, uh, many of us have in front of the house a uh, vase that have seven different herbs and they are supposed to bring good vibes into the home and, and avoid negative energy. So we, we are very like that. And well, candles. So candles, they're cheap, correct? You can buy candles for 50 cents. And it's interesting because in, in Brazil, they have different colors and each color means something. So you may buy, I don't know, red candles to find love. So you buy some of them, but they are all very cheap. Came this guy, it was a guy, and he started selling candles in the stores that they were this tiny. So let's say you buy a big red candle for, I don't know, $1. He was selling this tiny. They were shaped different. They were shaped like an egg and they were blue beautiful blue. And he would put them in a luxury box. It was a velvety kind of box. And inside, he would bring the, what that, that uh, candle would do for you. So, and he had a ritual with that. So you had to get the candle and you had to, to light seven candles in seven consecutive days. And you had to, to say this word or that word, and that would bring your biggest desire, whatever it was, or you would change, or your life would, would change immediately, something like that. The, the, the important part here is not what the candle was saying, is that there was a ritual for you to follow, and you would place a lot of importance on that item that was a candle. So of course, that candle didn't sell for a dollar. It sold like $7 or, or more many years ago. Well, he exploded. So he started creating other candles that would do other things. But, you know, you, uh, and I bought that myself. I was a teenager. Don't, don't, don't judge me. But, you know, I want a boyfriend, <laughs> right? I want the, the things that, boy, that, that a teenager wants. But he started exploding in sales. It, it became a huge phenomenon in that industry. While he was selling a commodity, a candle. So the thing is, you go to, to a Johann's Fabric and you can buy a, a plastic fairy for 2 or $3, right? That's a commodity, right? It's produced in mass. It doesn't have anything around that. It, what it has is the meaning that you are going to put when you make your fairy garden. So it's the same thing here. You know, what, how can you shape that product or sell that product? Which story can be attached to that that would change uh, the way people perceive for example, with fairies, we have a course coming with Sharon Nielsen that we know it's going to sell a lot. And, and why uh, the quality of, of the, the artist and the, the pieces are amazing, but she's bringing the brownie fairies. I, for one, never heard of them before. But then you go and, and read into that, and they're tricky fairies that they, they, they have a different approach. I don't, I don't know the story. I don't remember. But it has a different story. It's just not the cute fairy, right? And you know that's going to, to jive with people because we are always looking for these things. You know, if I have that one, how it is. So the thing is not sell, it's not the fairy that doesn't sell, it's how the fairy is being sold. Like I said, we can sell dirt all day and we are going to make money. So if you have a piece of art, maybe the way you're positioning this part when you sell is what's not correct and not the fairy. 
Don't blame the fairy. Fairy are cute. I love fairies. Don't blame them. Even though I would have some chubby fairies because I don't know why all the fairies have to be young and skinny. Come on. What about a very chubby middle-aged lady? Huh? I'm a single fairy. I'm a single fairy. I'm a single fairy. So, you know, change the story of what you're selling and, and don't blame what you're selling. But I talk, told you about another ritual with the story of the candles, right? So do we have here a Curious Mondo that everything that, that we do at Curious Mondo is actually planned. So the reason we have a host is not because we need somebody to read the questions, right? It's because the host is supposed to represent you there because you know, we know you are not there but you would like to be there. So how can we put you there? That's one thing. The, we start the same way almost every day. We may change a phrase or two, but it comes to the same, to the same thing. Welcome here, we are live, please interact. And, and then we tell all the countries. We tell all the countries, not because we want to, for you to, not, well, not only because we want you to see people, you have like-minded people, but really to, for you to get the sense that it's beyond uh, a, a video platform that gives free courses. It's a community of like-minded people, and it doesn't matter where you live. It really doesn't. It doesn't matter where you live, what's your color, what's your gender, nothing. Even if you're an alien from another, another planet, it doesn't matter. If you're here with us, we all think alike, and that brings power to all of us. Right? So we have that and we have the drawing right at the very end because we need to do a call to action because we need to make money with the product, uh, the, the time of each, each segment. So all that is always the same. Why? Because these are rituals. It, it may, you may not see like that. You may see, no, it's just the structure of the course. No, it's not. Uh, it, it is really for you to, when you get there, it's like if you go into a church or into a, 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 a multi-level company, you always know what's the procedure and that makes your mind be at easy, right? Because we don't, we never want a, a person to go into the fight or fly mode like we, we all were in the first two weeks of this virus because we do irrational things. We go into the supermarket and we buy toilet paper and we go again when we buy more toilet paper and we go again and we, buy, and we don't buy the food because when we are in that anxiety mode, the, the fight or fly, we don't make logical decisions. Right? So if people are anxious because they don't know what's going to happen and things like that, that happens quite often and it decreases the sales, right? So you have to think, okay, anxiety needs to be down. So let's talk who is here, if we are all alike, and then, then we go, so Jody, what are we going to cover today to answer the unanswered question? You don't know what's going to happen, right? It's always the same because that creates a, a ritual. But there is some mystique. You get to see glimpses from the inside, but you don't see everything. Right? You get to see some of the people that work there, but you're not sure where Mary is. Right? And, and, and so there, there, there are things that we keep the mystery because everything that is overexposed, uh, it loses interest. So that yesterday I told you, be careful me on social media all the time and trying to fulfill every single uh, request that you have there because this is overexposure. It doesn't work on TV, it doesn't work in the movies, it doesn't work in social media either. Okay, oof, I talk a lot. Okay, um, I have here, Jan. Thomas Kincaid did that by incorporating the 13.1 inch in his paintings. An answer questions and meet stick can be done in art. It can, it can. Uh, a simple way is if you introduce something new and you quite, you, you can, for me that happens a lot. I cannot quite figure what the process, man, I have to figure what's the, that process. If it means buying the course, if it means buying the book, if it means taking an in-person class, I'm going to figure that process. So that can be used all the time. Yes, you're correct. Cindy, love all this information. Thank you. Cheryl, yes, you have rituals at Curious Mondo. She knows. I mean, we have the right time where we pick them up to, to the hotel, the restaurants that we take. Everything is not by chance. Right, because uh, uh, we see that we have two, two, we are partners with the instructor, but they are still taking a risk because they only make money if the course sells, right? So we have to treat them very well. We want all of them to be happy with us and to come back, and we have our customers, 
right? And they all have different needs and they have different expectations. So you, you have to have things structured or else you are answering things in the middle of the night on Sunday and that's not fun. Uh, Mystique, who will Curious Mondo discover next? What type of art and craft will Curious Mondo show? How to repurpose something, be it flowers, sculpture, containers, made from clothes, light, basket, weaving, you know us, Nancy, right? And uh, um, Curious Mondo ritual giveaway for sharing, yes. And that, that's an incentive as well. Oh, I hope you understood the ritual and the Mystique part. And there are many companies that if you look, uh, there is that. Yesterday I told you about Voges chocolate on how you should consume the chocolate. Well, she is establishing a ritual for you to eat the chocolate, for example. Um, then you have to become uber present. So you have to be everywhere and you, you do more now than ever. So even if you're very uncomfort uncomfortable online, you gotta start exploring that. Uh, hopefully this will be over soon, but it may take the, the people longer to be able to expose themselves and go to farmer's market again like they used to go or galleries or whatever. So you have to be prepared. And if you're not there, somebody else will be there. So we got to be top of mind when it comes to whatever type of art you do. And you can be top of mind by many ways. It doesn't have to be offering free stuff all the time or free tutorials. I told you that's a trap. Uh, it can be there by, by saying who you are. For example, I have a bunch of artists that just seeing how they are dealing with all this and with the politics, I say, whoa, I like, I like the way she goes. So I pay more attention to that person. I do uh, will read whatever they post. And there's a bunch that I say, oh my gosh, right? I don't want to hear from you. So, so you, we got to be, and we got to use different places, offline and online, because offline is still very good. And again, don't listen to everything you hear out there. Like, for example, emails. Emails don't work. I get that. I've been getting that, I don't know, for how many years. So if they didn't work, I would be wrong for at least seven, eight years. The, the percentage of people that read the emails is always very low. You are dealing, marketing is dealing with numbers, with percentages, right? And you know that if you reach a certain percentage with, with emails, sometimes it's less than 5%, you can make this much money. And, and that is where you work. Uh, it's rare that you have 20% opening and, and action taking rates in email. But it was like that 10 years ago. Right, it got worse, but it was always a, a low percentage. But the fact is you can communicate with the people that are already interested in you. So not having a way to have emails from, from people that you deal with, it just complicates things. And it complicates a lot at some point. Um, and you can do this in several ways. Usually when you have a website, that's way easier, but you can do that in several ways. But if you don't have the list, when you need to communicate, for example, in a time like now, you're dead in the water. And if you think that because you're posting and you have 5,000 followers, that will lead into sales. Again, I have, I don't know how many friends I have on Facebook, but let's say I have 4,000 friends there. Facebook doesn't show me what all those 4,000 are, are posting out there. Actually, my sister is there and I never see her posts. So it has the algorithm and it, that algorithm changes all the time. So if I, if I trust that by posting something once, a lot of people will see because I have 4,000 people, I would be starving in the streets. That's what would happen. It's very frustrating, but that's what happened. The percentage that is even lower because you're dealing with an algorithm that you have no control over and they will show whatever the algorithm is thinking you should be seeing now. And if you don't like, if you don't whitelist or whatever is the process, you just don't see. So you, you think I have 4,000, but maybe 40 of them see my posts every day. How much money can that bring? Okay. So for a uh, last story. So this crisis came and I still, I, I, we don't do consulting anymore, but we still have some clients from the past. And one of them is a friend, is also a friend of mine that has a restaurant in town. Uh, and I, I'm friends with a lot of restaurant owners, just saying it's a very good kind of friendship. But this happened and the, the here really overnight, the restaurants had to close. And, and the moment I heard that, I have many friends that own restaurants. So I think, oh my gosh, how, how we make them stay alive? All these people have not only a bunch of employees, but family, right? That depend on them. 
And I remember that the day in, here in Salt Lake, the governor announced that in the morning and said that by 11 p.m., uh, it's, they have to close. And so it caught people by surprise. So National and I, we, we, we finished Curious Mondo, and I said, let's go have lunch there because I want to talk to him because we need to do something. So we get there. He was not there. Uh, we, we have dinner. And then this guy, he's, he's a guy that also works with, with online media. And he comes to talk to us. Hey, you see what happened? It's over. It's over. And I told him, uh, it's not over. We just need to be very creative now. No, it's over. It's not going to work. And I said, well, there are options. You can have takeout. You can have... No, 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 no. He, he's going to have closed. And I looked at all the waiters that I know them personally, and I was thinking, no. I stopped talking because I'm not going to discuss. So people that hold the truth, good for them. But, yeah, and a waiter came to me and the manager and she said, I have no clue what I'm going to do. My rent is due in two days and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, first of all, you're going to breathe deep and then we are going to figure out. Okay, I left the restaurant and by coincidence, he called me like an hour later. And I said, oh, I was just there. We got to do something. And he was desperate, right? Like, like lo lots of people were. And I said, okay, let's breathe tonight. And, and then tomorrow we reconvene but because we need to think. And he said, take out is not an option right now because of this, this, and that. Okay. And, and he said, uh, I, I'm going to have to fire everybody. And, and I said, well, you are going to keep some of them and, and put them the others on hold. Let's talk tomorrow. Okay. Co tomorrow came. Uh, I said, you know what we are going to do? We are going to sell gift certificates. And then I had to hear what I hear from, oh, it's not going to sell because they usually sell this many and they are not going to sell because people don't pay attention to email. Uh, and I said, we are going to do it. I'm going to write and we are going to send it out. And I wrote, I wrote a letter talking about the situation. I'm not going to try to, to say, hey, everything is fine. Get a, a gift certificate, right? Because it is not. So I wrote a letter and we send it out and we send out one uh, one week and the other one week and what i have to tell you is this he sold thousands and thousands of dollars on gift certificates and that not only allowed him to restructure so now there are other things that he can do that he couldn't do before because the restaurant is closed uh, and he was able to give lunches to all his employees for two weeks because some of them, you know, young people, they already don't make a lot of money. They don't save money, right? So they, they were all caught in a very dire situation. He was able to offer food for them. For, he has two restaurants, food for all of them during two weeks. And now we are creating different types of promotions with different kinds of things that he can keep going until this is over. What I wanted to tell you is this. You hear a lot of stuff and we tend to follow what the majority is thing is saying we need to stop and think in my case and how could I say this or how could I do this that would cause a different outcome again he had over 70 employees has the family each in, in each restaurant there is one daughter that is married with kids that takes care of that restaurant so a lot of people on in stake here and we were able to manage of course if this lasts very, very long, we have to think about other things, and we are. But, you know, you can. It's not, oh, it doesn't work. 2%, if you have a good list, can mean a lot of money. And if you learn how to, to, to tell the story, how to talk to people about what you're trying to achieve, and you are transparent and you're not trying marketing gimmicks, we are the best, we are awesome, you know, you, you can achieve what you want. So, is this good? Or did I <laughs> too much? Let me see. Uh, I'm dealing, Jenny saying, I'm dealing with this by recreating my website. Good thing. I am avoiding that right now. Uh, but when it's done, I have no idea how to market it. So, so that's when you can use the social media to market that website. If you just put it out there, even if you put keywords and all the things that need to be done, uh, the search engines are not going to bring you a lot of traffic because there's just billions of websites, right? But with the social media, let's suppose you also make ferries. Uh, if you post pictures and you, and you talk about it, or if you have a blog, blogs still do work. A ask Rebecca Mossoff, she does modern 
tapestry. Ask if her blog doesn't work. I know a lot of artists that uh, succeed very well with that. Again, don't listen to the majority. They don't know what they're talking about. Uh, so you, you will use social media to, to market your website. And then you start sending people there. And hopefully, you will have a way to capture their information. F for us, we, we use the free because people want to come and watch a whole course for free, they give their name and email. You will have to give something of value back. Cannot be a newsletter, okay? Because we are all flooded with those. Unless it's a newsletter that is very specific to a topic and, and includes some processes there, some tips and tricks and things like that. That could work, uh, but not the normal newsletter. Uh, so figure a way, something that you can give of value that they would be willing to give their name and email. And yes, a lot of people are going to say you send too much stuff and they want to unsubscribe. And some of them don't even care to click on the unsubscribe button. They, they have to call and ask you to do it. And that's okay. Uh, you always will have some part of the audience that will not be happy with what you're doing. And there's no way around it. Um, yes, 4429. Shahari, you are a very wise woman. Thank you. Who has clearly faced adversity before and succeeded? You don't know. I don't even tell you. Uh, I told you I rebuilt my life at least three times from na from nothing. Uh, but that you know, I was unhappy then. But today, I think okay, I can manage things and I can manage my stress. And that doesn't mean I'm not a very anxious person. I am. That doesn't mean I, I don't freak out. I do. I was telling Italian Jody today when all this start happening way before we were told to be home, I, I start thinking, okay, this is coming. And, and in my mind, I, I need to look at all, I, I do have a 360 view. I need to think about all the variables and possibilities. I need to do that in order to calm. And I start thinking, I need to do this. And so what are the, the outcomes? It can be this way. So we do this. It can be that way. And what if I have to, to fire somebody? I don't want. They are young people. Same thing. They don't have a lot of money. They have bills to pay, rent to pay. So what, what do we have to do? And I start preparing. And I have to tell you, I put a sanitizing station by the door uh, weeks before we were told to do that. And they were all making fun of me because I'm, I'm the old person that they say, okay, Shahar, whatever, Shahar. When I told them you have to wear masks, they some of them were angry. And I say, it looks like I am the one that is sick. And I said, no, it looks like that you are respecting the other and we are going to use. And they tried to rebel and everything, but you know, Shahar is asking. And they, they really roll the eyes, right? But we created a uh, the, 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 the what to do next. So for example, what if we have to stay home and cannot go to the, to the office? Then what do we do? And then we decided to create a, a structure here. It's not as good as, as being there, but it, it works. Uh, and then we create, okay, what if the teachers have to cancel because they cannot travel? At that time, that was still not happening. And then we, we said, okay, we are going to have this many reruns. We are going to create this format that they can do um, outside the, this environment. And we are going to do this. And we loaded those things to the cloud so we can move from anywhere that we were. So we went through every single scenario and prepared for that before things happen. And of course, when they did happen, we don't have a stay at home order here. We have a directive. So I can go to the studio and I really, I, we go to the studio. We see two people there only instead of everybody that we usually have. And we come back home and we avoid everything else, but we still can go there. Uh, and we are deemed as essential because it's, it's uh, um, distance learning anyway. Uh, but what happened next? Every single instructor that was coming out of town had to cancel. They have no other way. Right, and but we were prepared for that, right? We, and we start implementing a new format that you, you're actually going to watch next week. We still don't know if it's going to work or not when it comes to sales, but we created a solution to the problem. Uh, I have a good friend and he's a, a very successful person as a consultant and, and in an in a industry here. And he says, focus on the solution, not on the problem. And I have a hard time with that because I can see the bad side really bad. You know, the, the glass half empty, I'm very good at the half empty. I have to train myself uh, to, to see both sides, right? But it's one of the best things that I could ever hear. Focus on the solution, not on the problem. And so that, that's really what I think about everything. 
the ferry is not sailing. The problem is not this. What is the solution for this? Okay, then we talked about how you're telling the story about that. So in everything, there is that. And I think more now more than ever, we need to focus on the solution because we only have control up to a point. We don't know when things will be open. We don't know if they will be open. We don't know if people are going to go out. We don't know many things. See how many unanswered questions. My anxiety is high, yours is too, and that's normal, and we have to be okay with that. But if we focus on what are the solutions if this happens for me and for my business, what can I do? Really, today when I saw the post of this artist, never saw her before, and she said, I cannot be a massage therapist, therefore I'm making this, and it was totally different, it was art. I thought, man... You know, if we all do this and don't, don't do a pity party about why I cannot do this now, but we go and make something or we, we take action on something that we can, how much better would this time be? I mean, really, you can, you can take the feeling of being home as a curse or as a blessing. It's up to you. Uh, I really don't stay home enough. And I think the, the more time that I'm having here is, is better for me. I, I'm finishing prod, projects, I feel accomplished. It gives me time to think. It gives me time to analyze myself, things that I want to change from now on because I was seeing things in one way and maybe now I need to see things in other ways. So it can be a curse or a blessing. It's your choice what you do, but try to focus on the solution, not on the problem. I'll read the last announcements. Photography of art for online selling would be a very useful course for me. Okay, I noted. Uh, Island Girl Shahar, you need to grow your hair so you can flip the, your lolos. Uh, Diana, I had to rebuild as well. My late hubby told me the upside of my spot was that I could only go up. Right? Uh, guess 4429, me too. You are an island of reassurance and inspiration in troubled times. I bought Jody's course this morning. Thank you. Uh, Island Girl, yes, but don't leave in denial. Some people think that it's positive and it is not okay to ignore the problem. That needs to be looked at. But the approach to solve, it is positive in itself. Exactly. I don't stay away from the issues and, and I think that's... A, I don't stay away from the news. It's very easy to keep blaming that everything is fake and nothing's being said. Uh, I, I came from TV and I think it's a very noble pro profession. Some of them, they really twist a little bit. But... You know, it's, uh, that's not what needs to be blamed. And you need to be aware of what's going on in order to focus on the solution. If you really don't know anything about what's going on, then it's really hard to find a solution. Uh, I had a point here that I wanted to point. I still haven't talked about other ways other than online courses. So tomorrow I'll do that for sure. Uh, what are the other ways that you can sell your art without having to create online courses? If you want to create, create. But... There are other options as well, and they can become very interesting in the near future, especially if you use your creative juices to, to do that in a different way. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure I talk about that. Woo! Did I went? No, I didn't go for half an hour. Nashla, it's an issue, because then we cannot watch TV. We have to go to bed. <laughs> Guys, I hope you, you get something out of this. Uh, I'm not saying I, I, I know everything about everything, but we have implemented this system, like I told you, with dozens of businesses. And we've seen them grow a lot. You know, one of my best businesses is, is in a city nearby. They were our clients for, I think, 13 years, uh, owned by a woman. Unfortunately, she passed away last year. I have a picture of her in my office. And... I admire that woman a lot because she started from nothing. She built a multi-million dollar industry. She started with two people in my office and today she has over 20, 27 employees and always uh, not now the family that owns the business now. It's unbelievable. It can be done. It can be done when we have nothing. What we need to think is be humble enough to admit you don't know everything. And then when you find a nugget of something that you think you can implement, you go for it and you do it and you perfect it along the way. You don't give up because something didn't work. So this system has been applied with that company as well. Uh, and 
they, we all had a very good run with it because we hit the right market, the right people with the right message. And that's what you need to think. And if you follow the steps, you're going to see it's hard at the beginning. But as you create, maybe you come up for, oh, I forgot one step, increase trust. People need to trust you in order to buy from you. And we spent a lot of time being not, not having good experiences with, with companies. That's why the recession happened, right? Uh, so people have this thing that if it's a company, it's evil, and we have to break that barrier. And I feel that every day, you know, because I think, yes, I have a company, but it's a company made of humans, and humans that work very hard to make it happen. And, and it's hard to translate that message to people. Some get, but some don't. It, you're a business, so you want money. Well, without money, I cannot have the business. So it, it, sometimes it's challenging. But if you work that, uh, the trust comes and everything happens for you. So think about the steps, reread it, and it, maybe it will come out in the shower two or three or three weeks from now. But once you start implementing that, you do see the results. Uh, Paula is saying, thank you for doing this. I always learn a lot. Thank you. Uh, lots of information, give inspiration, and a, a bunch of thank yous. Thank you so much for being this long with me here. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to go into what I just said. Oh, the formats for online that you can sell and the artist statement, okay? So be here at the same time. And thank you so much for spending this hour with me. I really appreciate that. See you tomorrow. Oh, and see you tomorrow morning for the masks. Carolyn Chan will be sh showing people, it's a free course, it's going to stay free, uh, how people sew protective masks in different ways. You don't want to miss, you may know somebody that wants to do that. Thank you so much.